the discovery of the Codex Sinaiticus by Tischendorf is one of the best known stories in the history of paleography. In 1844 Tischendorf, who had planned a fresh critical edition of the New Testament and had already visited most of the great libraries of the West, was traveling in the East in order to discover what new light might still be obtained from the monastic libraries. In the convent of St. St. Catherine at Mount Sinai, he found in the basket, which he understood to contain material for lighting the fire, forty-three leaves of the Septuagint. These he obtained and published in 1846 under the title of Codex Federico Augustanus, for the name of the King of Saxony under whose patronage he was traveling. This codex is now at Leipzig. He ascertained that the rest of the manuscript was in existence, and though he was unable to obtain possession of it, he cherished the hope of returning at some later period and of then being more successful. That in this way Tischendorf rightly earned the fame of discovering the valuable manuscript which would be denied by no one. But Monsieur Seymour de Ricci of the Revue Archaeologique 1909 pointed out that it was probably seen as early as 1761 by the Italian traveler Vitaliano Donati in his visit to Mount Sinai. After Tischendorf left the monastery, the manuscript seems to have seen has seems to have been seen by two other scholars. In 1845, Porphyrius Uspensky, afterwards Archbishop of Sinai, visited Sinai and saw the manuscript not only the remnant which Tischendorf had, Tischendorf had seen, but also the other parts to which it was now reunited. It would therefore seem that Tischendorf's conversation with the monks had, arou had aroused them to a sense of the value of their property. It is generally thought that the manuscript was also seen by Major MacDonald, a Scotsman who visited Sinai in 1848. In 1853, Tischendorf returned to Sinai, but could find no trace of the manuscript, or even discover whether it was still in the library. In 1859, however, he again visited the mountain, armed with an introduction from the Tsar, and he was warmly welcomed, but did not venture directly to approach the search for the manuscript, until one evening he found a favorable opportunity for leading the conversation onto the subject of the Septuagint. Septuagint. These tactics proved successful, and later on, the Orkonomos, desirous of showing that the monks also had a manuscript of the, of the Septuagint, brought him the codex wrapped in a red cloth. Tischendorf's delight can be imagined when he found that it contained not only a great part of the Septuagint, but the whole of the New Testament, Barnabas, and part of Hermas. An arrangement was made with the monks that, if the superiors of the monastery who were living at Cairo were willing, the manuscript would be sent to Cairo to be copied. Hurriedly returning thither, Tischendorf persuaded the representatives of the monastery to make this concession, and in consequence a messenger was sent to St. Catherine's to fetch the manuscript, which on February 24, 1859, reached Cairo where it was copied by Tischendorf and two assistants in the extraordinarily short space of two months. After this, Tischendorf suggested to the monks at Cairo that the manuscript should be given to the Tsar. In November 1859, the manuscript was exhibited for a fortnight and was then taken to Leipzig in order that Tischendorf might issue a facsimile edition in accordance with the Tsar's orders. Photography was not in those days sufficiently advanced to enable it to be employed, though Tischendorf considered its uh, possibility, but special type was cut to imitate the manuscript, and the result may fairly claim to be the most perfect facsimile edition which was ever published in the pre-photographic period. It is a triumph of printing, and Tischendorf's notes will always remain an indispensable aid to the study of the manuscript. The manuscript was finally handed over to the Tsar and deposited in the Imperial Library, 
as it then was where it was exhibited in a special showcase in the great hall. Meanwhile, the monks of Sinai had received nothing in return for their magnificent present, and in a letter dated July 15, 1869, the Archbishop of Sinai hinted to Tischendorf that the time was approaching when the monks might reasonably expect some suitable acknowledgement. In consequence of this letter, Tischendorf appears to have written to the Russian ministry, and the result was that on 8, November 18, 1889, 7,000 rubles were received by the monks of St. Catharines, 2,000 rubles by the affiliated monastery of Mount Tabor, and various decorations by the leading monks. The latter, however, have always claimed that they did not accept this as a satisfactory settlement, but no written protest on their part is known to exist, and the Archbishop, at all events, remained on friendly terms with Tischendorf.